Hello, everybody. My name is Alexander Kazina, a.k.a. Cozy Bear, and I'd like to thank you for joining me once again on my Pokemon Leaf Green Critical Lock. Uh, this is the only Nuzlocke run on the internet where every time someone scores a crit, I spin the Wheel of Criticality and unjure whatever punishment it so doles upon me. Man, I really struggle at the end of that sentence. Oh, God. Basically, I spin the wheel, it lands on something bad, and I gotta do it. And maybe it'll force me to do something IRL that makes me all tired and sweaty, like doing push-ups, or maybe it makes my leaf green run that much more difficult than it already is. Uh, you can catch the show you're currently watching live on twitch.tv slash Live every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and when you're done with that, you can catch up on all my previous broadcasts on YouTube, where they publish as VODs every Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, let's not dawdle any further and let's jump right into tonight's stream. Man, oh man, last stream was just a whole brick and a half of madness. I initially was feeling really good about my prospects within Mount Moon, so much so that I titled last stream, Mount Moon is the best cave in any Pokemon game. And man, by the end of that stream, I was just defeated and beaten into the ground, literally and metaphorically. I just found that cave to be such a nuisance. There were just so many wild Pokemon, so many annoying trainers. And at the very end, we nearly lost a plot when we faced off against uh, a super nerd trainer that had far too many Pokemon on their team that were devoted to just completely and utterly wiping the floor with us. But the good news is that uh, we still have four Pokemon in our inventory. We have Blueberry, the War Turtle. We have Wild Wings, aka Wild West, uh, the Pidgey. Uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, Creamsicle, uh, the Magikarp, who amazingly survived. I thought for sure he was going to uh, get killed at the end of that one battle. Uh, and of course, we have uh, our level 2 Rattata, who unfortunately we did not give a nickname to. Uh, normally, I would not have him in my party because I truly do believe in the uh, essential uh, Nuzlocke rule that you must nickname all Pokemon that you happen to encounter. Uh, however, because we're running a little bit low on pokes at the moment, uh, I'm keeping him in the party for the time being uh, until uh, I no longer need him. I only beat that one Geodude earlier because, you know, two times critical effectiveness with water type moves. Most of these Pokemon, though, I'm not really bothering with. Ah, Paris. Paris? If I had gotten Paris, I bet he would have survived that one super nerd battle because he would have been able to paralyze his Pokemon. I don't recall if we have a whole lot of other Pokemon that we got to deal with after the Super Nerd. If we do, though, I'm confident that it won't be the worst in the world. Because um, we do have a, a team of like pretty solidly leveled up Pokemon that are certainly ready to take on whatever task should be laid before them next. Uh, level 9. Might as well. Oh, nope. Wrong move. Not very effective. My bad. Thankfully, he wasted his turn with Mud Sport, so we're okay. Goodbye, Geodude. But yeah, man, there was that one trainer. I, I posted a, a short of this on YouTube, but there was that one trainer that sent out an Oddish and a bell sprout, and I kept attacking them with my Pidgey's Gust, and they would get one hit KO'd, and it would still be a critical hit, and it's like, motherfucker, just stop critting all the time. We don't need this in our lives. We really don't. We have far too many annoying things going on in our lives at the moment. We definitely don't need an extra and an unnecessary crit that contributes nothing to the battle in question. Gotta say, Pokemon, I'm not... Pokemon are not jumping out at me with the same frequency as you might expect. Last time we beat the Super Nerd, but we did not choose our fossil. Uh, 
I have decided that I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to pick the Helix Fossil. Um, not because of the memes, but because uh, in this generation... Uh, oh, uh, yeah, Helix Fossil. Uh, Ominate and Elmaster are, I believe, the superior of the Fossil Pokemon. I think that... Well, because the problem, right, is that in this gen, uh, the physical special split hasn't happened. Um, and that means, I mean, like both... Uh, Ammonite and Ammastar and Kabuto and Kabutops are like advantage and disadvantage by that. Uh, Kabutops can really take advantage of its rock type stab, whereas Ammastar, I don't know how to pronounce his name in any case, um, that dude can take advantage of his water type stab, but his like extended move pool of other moves that he can use in addition to uh, his water type moves is like quite a bit more fast, so Ammastar is the way to go. And here we go. Back in the day, back when I played ye old Pokemon games for the first time, this was a very, um, this was a moment you finally managed to get out of the long and dark and arduous Cerulean Cave. You can see, oh, Cerulean City is just right up ahead. Uh, and then before you know it, uh, you're forced to jump down a ledge and say goodbye to, uh, the previous route that you came from. Of course, you can eventually get back, but it's not quite so right away that you can do so. Uh, before we head on to Cerulean City, uh, let's chat with some of the bros over here, because these guys uh, can teach us Mega Punch and Mega Kick. And I'm thinking that it would be worthwhile to teach some of our Pokemon how you use these moves. Uh, a punch of roaring ferocity, packed with destructive power. When the chips are down, Mega Punch is the ultimate attack. The only thing is, I think that only War Turtle can actually learn how to use this right now, and I'm pretty certain it's actually the same thing with Mega Kick as well. Mega Kick I'm not quite as privy to because that one has a uh, much lower accuracy to it. You know what? I'm actually going to hold off for the time being because I want to see if I can capture a Pokemon uh, in the routes uh, adjacent to where I currently am uh, and teach that Pokemon one of those two moves as well because that will help me determine which of the two Mega moves I want to teach the War Turtle. Now, where are we on the map? I want I just want to check real quick to make certain that we're not um, on a route that we've already caught a Pokemon inside of. Oh. Interesting. Okay, okay, okay. So that was... So we actually... We technically have already been on Route 4. It's just that we've never been in a section of Route 4 where we've been able to catch any Pokemon in the grass. Uh, we were in Mount Moon, but Mount Moon is sort of, I think, categorized as sort of like its own part of the map and not part of Route 4, per, you know, the Nuzlocke rules. Uh... Yeah, let's go ahead and let's see who we can find. All right, here we go. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm happy that we now have, like, another Rattata who's, like, a little bit more leveled up, who, you know, exists with a little bit more, more parity with the rest of where the rest of our team is at. But, like, man, there are so many other Pokemon we could have gotten from this patch of grass. So many other Pokemon, but they had to give us a Rattata. All right. Let's catch him, and we'll give him a nice little nickname, and we'll shove our level 2 Rattata into our Pokemon box. Oh, wait a minute. Fuck. All right. Guess we're not catching Rattata. Goodbye. That was my bad. I should have uh, checked my bag ahead of time. Well, hopefully it will be someone different this time. Nope, it's another Rattata. Jesus. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm ratted out. Goodbye. I, I normally say that when I'm already launched off my attack. Jesus, he got in two attacks between uh, my first water gun and my second water gun. That's enough. That's enough. All right. There we go.
And here we go. Cerulean City. Uh, first things first. Uh, not that we absolutely need it, but it's always good to have our HP topped off. So let's go ahead and let's do that right here and right now. Gonna chat with everyone in the Pokemon Center, make sure that they're not... Oh, wait a minute. Hmm. Did I make a mistake not teaching my Pokemon how to use Make a Punch or Make a Kick right then and there? Because I think I might actually have a bit of difficulty getting back to those guys. That's not good. Whatever, we'll, we'll, fan, we'll manage things, we'll figure it out. Uh, and there is the Cerulean City Gym. I think I could probably take on Misty right now if I needed to, but... I think I will hold off on that for the time being. All right, let's get some Pokeballs so we don't have a, a repeat of what happened earlier. <clears throat> Man, we really don't have a lot of money on hand. Yeah, we had to give away one of our rare candies last stream because, unfortunately, our uh, prize wheel of criticality landed on the uh, drop 10 spot. Which, by the way, I switched over to the uh, I switched over to being drop five uh, per what I discussed on the previous stream. I found drop 10 to be a little bit much, um, and so I switched it over to drop five, as you can see over here. That way, if this uh, should happen again to us, uh, we won't be utterly depleted of items uh, when it should happen next time. All right. Unfortunately, these guys won't have a whole lot to offer us right now. Uh, eventually, we will want to get ourselves a bicycle because that will make matters so much faster for us. But unfortunately, to get our bike, we're going to need uh, a bike voucher. And to get a bike voucher, we gotta continue exploring a little bit more. Man, the original Pokemon games really, really uh, a polywhirl. Hmm. I, I, it would be interesting to have a, a Jinx this early in the game, but the problem with Jinx is that while kind of an interesting Pokemon typing wise with both ice and psychic type moves, um,. It's kind of frail. It's not a very good Nuzlocke Pokemon, to be totally a thousand percent honest. Hey, rare candy. This guy, I believe that this guy, yep, this is for the berry powder, which it's weird that in this game they're like, hey, it's berry powders. Uh, and then in the Ruby Sapphire Emerald games, they were like, oh, yeah, it's um. What is it? N not Berry, not Poffins, that's for Gen 4. Um, wh wh what are they called? Pokey Blocks, there we go. You know, weird how they didn't just make it Pokey Blocks across all the Gen 3 games. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying earlier, it's weird... Um, like, how much <laughs> uh, this game kind of holds off on giving you cool stuff. Fuck, I forgot this was going to happen. I still should probably do okay with this battle. I don't remember his team being a complete and utter knockout. We also, we got some potions before this battle, so we should be okay. Okay. Uh, this guy's most definitely going to try to do, um, what's it called? Uh, sand attack. So we just got to be mindful. I guess no sand attacks. Oh, probably... I have rarely have ever seen him do this. Interesting, so it's still a Bulbasaur. Okay, well that... Whoa, critical hit time, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm actually pretty happy that we got that critical hit, because after I spin the wheel, I'm going to swap back uh, out to Pidgey, uh, because his flying-type moves will be more effective against Bulbasaur. 
uh, and I want to, you know, minimize the amount of damage that Bulbasaur will do to Pidgey in turn. But before we do that, let's spin the wheel. Dealer's Choice. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time uh, for Dealer's Choice. What do I want to do? What punishment do I want to inflict upon myself? Ooh. You know what? Let's start things off strong. Let's start things off with a bang. Let's go ahead and let's do five nice little push-ups. Don't worry, there will be one stream in the future where I'll say ten push-ups when I get a Dealer's Choice, but right now, I don't want to overexert myself, so we're going to push up land. Five push up land. One, two, three, four. And there you go. That is how the cookie crumbles. Ooh. All right. We're going to go ahead and we're going to swap out the Pidgey because uh, Pidgey will be able to resist Bulbasaur's grass type moves uh, and pack a mean punch with Gust. Oh, sleep powder. This isn't good. I mean, I'm still glad that I swapped out. Um, <clears throat> maybe we'll get lucky. We'll see. Sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, my streams are not without their issues and errors, and I made the mistake of not immediately switching back over to my Pokemon view at that moment. Forgive me. There we go. Okay, that didn't do as much damage as I was hoping it would, to be honest. Oof. Uh, assuming this isn't a... Uh... Come on. God damn it. <laughs> I don't really want to swap back out, back out to Blueberry, but I feel like I might have to. If I... Oh, you know what I can do? You know what I can do? Good old Rattata at level 2 that I don't really want to use a whole lot. I can swap into him, use him as a sacrifice, and then swap out to good old Blueberry next. Let's do that. Now I just have to trust that he won't unexpectedly speed tie with me and get a vine whip in first. Uh, we'll do bite. There we go. Okay, well, I really didn't expect or want a critical hit to happen that much soon after the previous one, but lo and behold, here we are. Let's go. <sighs> drop five. That means we're going to have to, after this battle, uh, drop five items that are currently uh, resting in our bag. Uh, this might get a little bit dicey because we don't have a lot of items in our bag right now. And some of those items are some of the Pokeballs that we want to use to catch wild Pokemon. I am glad that I switched to drop five because if we had done drop ten, that would have been too much. Uh, Pidgeotto. We'll... Keep the simple at water gun. Wow, I I did not remember being. Fuck you, Jesus fucking Christ! All right, guys, at up and at him. One, two, and three. Sweet. 
switch it up. This is the first time that the prize wheel had, has landed on this. Uh, this means that I gotta switch around my Pokemon three times, which means that there's a not impossible chance that someone might end up dying, uh, depending on what Pokemon uh, our rival sends out next. Radita. Okay. Okay. We also only have three Pokemon left on our team, so... Yeah. Alright. Switch number one. What the fuck?! What the fuck? What the actual living fuck Rooney? Well, time for another prize wheel. I will get back to switching out my Pokemon two more times after the game fucking lets me get a break. One, two, and three. Go broke. All right. That means that after this battle, I also got to go and uh, use up all my money. So we got to switch to two more Pokemon. Uh, after the battle, we got to drop five items, and then we got to go broke. I fucking am praying that we won't have to spin this wheel any more times uh, for the next little while. All right, Wild West. Do your best. Fuck. And here we go. We are back out the blueberry. After this battle, I seriously need to sit down, capture some Pokemon, and just grind, 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 because... Ugh. Things... This this run has thus far been brutal on me. <sighs> now, here's the thing. I don't think that Abra knows any attacking moves, which actually works out quite well in our favor. Or does it? I think it only knows teleport until it levels up. There we go. Actually, you know what? If it truly only knows teleport... No, I was about to swap in Creamsicle, but I guess not. Fuck you, Cryhax. Oh, you're actually recommending that I go and thank someone? Okay. We actually will most definitely appreciate the fame checker because that will allow us to rebattle trainers, uh, which is always appreciated. Okay. Uh, first things first. Here's the thing. I'm still pretty happy that we have Magikarp in our party because... <sighs> Magikarp will eventually evolve into Gyarados, which is a very, very, uh, very powerful Pokemon. Definitely a good Pokemon to have on your team. <laughs> Even though he is hurt kind of badly by uh, Electric-type moves. And there we go. RIP box continues to get filled up. Uh, all right. We're going to heal these guys up. That's taken care of. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, leave ourselves with some of our items. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to start off by tossing one Pokeball. I'm going to go back over here. Uh, let's see here. What do we have in our berry pouch? Nothing. Wow. Uh, what do we have in our TM case? Let's see. Rock Tomb, Bullet Seed, Roar... I would not mind at all um, giving away Roar, because there's no way in hell we're ever going to use this. Do I want to do that? Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's do that. Definitely. Oh, no, wait. I can't. Uh, I can't toss it. Oh, that's interesting. Previously, you could toss it, but now you can only use or give it. I mean, what I could do is I could give it to a Pokemon in my R RIP box, actually. That is an option. Here we go. Revives. Um, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to toss this guy. Now, I could actually sell it for like a pretty penny, but either way, there's no way I would ever use it. So 
I don't particularly mind tossing it. There we go. So we've tossed two items. We've got three to go. Really hope that we can hold on to our Moonstone. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... Controversially, I'm going to go ahead and toss our rare candy. Um, because at the end of the day, we can always just level up our Pokemon via grinding. Yeah, I kind of want all four of the items in here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to toss uh, another Pokeball. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do exactly what I said it would do with regards to TMs. I'm going to open up my Pokemon box. Uh, I'm going to just real quick uh, grab the level 2 Rattata that recently fainted in battle. I'm going to stick a TM on him that we are not going to want to use anymore. And we are going to be on our way. I could have also, I, I guess what I could have also done is I could have taught him how to use Roar, because that would have technically also used up the move as well, considering that he's going to remain in the RIP box for the rest of the run. That is an option. Uh, anyways. Okay, where are we going next? Uh, right, we need to go to the Pokemon Mart, because uh, we have to get rid of all the precious, amazing money that we earned in that Gary battle. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 672. I guess what I can do is I can just get six antidotes and then immediately drop them. And there we go. Okay, so up ahead uh, on the route that our rivalist Gary Oak was located on, uh, we have the Nugget Bridge. This is a uh, series of challenging trainer battles uh, that culminate uh, in a fight with a Team Rocket member in disguise that will bequeath us a Nugget, which is an item that can be sold for a lot of money. Um, right here and right now, however, our team isn't really looking so hot. We only got Blueberry and we got Creamsicle. Creamsicle, not bad at level 12. Blueberry, not bad at all at level 20, but yeah, things are not great. So here's what we're going to do. Real simple, real quick. We're going to train up Creamsicle to reach level 15 because at level 15, uh, he learns how to use Tackle. And that will, um, if we need it, give him a nice little advantage in the um, Nugget Bridge battles, if we should so need to send him out into battle. I would have liked to have gotten a Sandshrew from this route, if I gotta be honest. I think Sandshrew would have definitely been able to survive all the machinations of the battle we had with our rival, because he has good defense stats. Actually, I think only his normal defense is good. I don't, I don't know about his special defense. In case this is not bad experience points for Creamsicle, I just need to hope that I won't, will not, absolutely will not <laughs> um, get a accidental crit, or my opponents won't get an accidental crit, and we will be good. I might want to consider just fighting the Sand Trues, actually. That might actually make my life a little bit easier. <sighs> mm, look at that, good old Spiro. Been a little while since we saw you. So, switching gears for a little second while we're having our nice little grind. Um, you might have heard, fuck, well, I guess we're going to have to put that on hold because I got another critical hit. Whew. It's supposed to only happen 6.25% of the time. That most definitely has not been 6.25% of the time. I want you to know that right here and right now. I don't have any money right now, so 
Unfortunately, this one is going to do nada. Goodbye. Uh, as I was saying, as you might have heard, the uh, 3DS and Wii U eShops are shutting down. Uh, it's been like this sort of gradual process where like a couple of months ago, it's like, all right, well, now you can't add funds for the credit card. And then it's like, well, now you can't add funds this way. Now you can't add funds that way. And then pretty soon you won't be able to download the games and so on and so forth. Basically, Nintendo slowly but surely is sunsetting their systems and it's very sad because i was you know hoping that they would be around for me to use and download from for quite some time to come but you know unfortunately there's only much so much server space to go around so that's the current kind of situation of things as it were uh ahead of the kind of complete shutdown of both the 3DS and Wii U eShops i've actually been uh going through their catalogs to try and determine uh, what games I should be downloading from them uh, before they go offline forever. Um, and I figured I might as well read uh, to you, uh, my dear viewers, um, every single game uh, on this list I have assembled. So, starting with the Wii U, we have Star Fox Guard. Uh, critical hit. Hold that thought. Right now, the only game that you know that I want to get uh, for my uh, Wii U before it goes completely offline is Star Fox Guard. And we will come back to that in just a second. Let's spin that wheel. Once again, we're already broke, so can't go broke if you're already broke. Broke, broke. If that, uh, I want to say this right here and right now uh, as a formal promise uh, to you, my dear viewer. Uh, if it should land on go broke again, uh, I positively swear that I will spin the wheel again so we don't get shortchanged out of another punishment opportunity. You have my word. All right. Let's go ahead and let's uh, continue the grinding and continue talking about the uh, 3DS and Wii U. So, uh, in terms of the Wii U games that I want to make a point of downloading before the console goes offline, uh, we got Star Fox Guard, Little Inferno, uh, Mini Mario and Friends Amiibo Challenge, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X, uh, Sonic Lost World and its associated Nintendo-themed DLCs, um, Star Fox Zero, uh, The Battle Begins plus Training, uh, Pokemon Ranger, uh, the original, uh, Super Mario World, Super Mario Advance 2, uh, and Trauma Team, uh, the, I want to say, third entry in the Trauma series that was originally released on the Wii. Fucking fuck nuts. It's critical hit time. What is going on? Is, is the game self-aware? Is this one of those AI fuck nuts that's trying to learn from me and trying to torment me into submission? Because if it is, I don't appreciate it. All right. I really thought that that was going to land on five push-ups, but instead it landed on switch it up. Because uh, the battle that we're in at the moment is already done, uh, we're instead going to have to switch it up in the next battle, which means that come next battle, we're going to have to switch in and out three times. Now, here's the thing. We're surrounded by grass. There's a good opportunity that just taking a few steps, we might end up accidentally... Uh, being thrust into a battle. I'm actually going to try and see if I can go to the Pokemon Center to heal up first, but oh, there we go. I guess that's not happening. Okay, it's a Rattata, and it's also level 8, which is actually a very decent level for it to be at because it means that we don't have to worry that much uh, about it immediately yeah, killing either of us. Did barely any damage to him. It's going to do a little bit more damage to Magikarp, but I would be shocked if it could 2KO either of us. Oh, perfect. Tail Whip. That's actually exactly the uh, move that we want it to use, because that means that um, our good friend uh, 
what's his face? Blueberry is not receiving the defense drop. And there we go. Thankfully, that was an instance of switching it up that didn't work uh, too badly against us. It wasn't like last time where it cost us the life of that dear Radita at level two that was still somehow slapped onto our team. Okay, getting back to the 3DS and Wii U games that I want to get. Uh, like I said, Super Mario World, Super Mario Advance 2, and Trauma Team. I did up the math, and in Canadian dollars, uh, the total uh, monetary value of all the Wii U games I just listed uh, amounts to $173.93. It's kind of kind of big but honestly it's not, it's not that bad when you consider that like an average um like your average uh like purchased new from the store shrink wrapped um nintendo switch game or you know playstation 5 or xbox series x game costs a little bit more than half of that here in canada it's about like 91 dollars. so 91 plus 91 you got 182 that is still less then 173 this game fucking despises me so we got to spin our prize wheel again one two and three ten push-ups okay well it's not something that particularly affects what's going on in game so i'll take it i'm not happy about it but I'll certainly take it. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. is only a word all right back to the grind Whew. so yeah in total all those wii u games i have interrupted my discussion of all the wii u games i want to get no less than like five times by now because some motherfuckers are always trying to crit uphill <sighs> god damn Uh, yeah, totals out to $173. Again, kind of large, but when you consider how much it would cost us to spend money on brand new video games, not that bad. Very reasonable. Uh, then it comes to the 3DS. Uh, before the 3DS slash uh, DS eShop uh, should go asunder, uh, my plan is to get my hands on Liberation Maiden, Pocket Card Jockey. Attack of the Friday Monsters exclamation point a Tokyo Tale Rusty's Real Deal Baseball Nintendo Badge Arcade uh, Sakura Samurai Art of the Sword Dark Void Zero Fire Emblem Fates both like Nor and Hoshido and the uh, Revelations DLC thingy um, Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright Professor Layton and the Miracle Mask Professor Layton and the Azran Legacy uh, Rhythm Thief and the Emperor's Treasure and Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, uh, the remake that includes the like Bowser's Minions sub story thing. Uh, all those games are looking to total out at $332.10. And with that, it's time for our <laughs> minute crit because it feels like we've been getting crits every fuck ton of a minute. Give me just a quick second. Honestly, give me another 10 push-ups. That was nothing. I can do another 10. Easy. One, two, and three. So 
switch it up. All right, well, like last time, uh, that means that the next time that we go into a Pokemon battle, we're gonna have to switch up our Pokemon three times in a row. And hopefully nothing bad will befall us while this is going on. Hopefully. Maybe it'll be like another level two Rabbita or something. Or a Sandshrew. I'll, I'll take a Sandshrew. He doesn't have like the best attack stat in the game. He probably won't be able to fuck either of us up while we're switch a switch a switch a ruining. Uh, I mean, look here. Here's the thing. That critical hit right there didn't do a whole lot of damage. It's still a crit though, and I'm not happy about that. I like after this stream is over. I am seriously going to like like minutely analyze. Uh, this particular stretch of the stream just to see how many crits I got in a row because this is fucking nuts One Two And three Go broke uh, So the thing about go broke uh, is that typically when my prize wheel of criticality lands on this, I got to go broke and spend all the money that I currently have sitting in my nice little Pokemon piggy bank. Uh, however, I've been broke for a little while now, and I already spun the wheel and it already landed on that spot twice. I previously promised I would spin it again if this happened, so we're spinning it again. Five push-ups. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another five push-ups. Sorry, I noticed that my camera was frozen for a second. Just wanted to make sure everything was okay. All right. One. Two. Three, four, five. I swear to God, I'm going to review how many crits I got over the course of like the past 20 minutes of my stream. And it's seriously going to be like one crit per minute. It's going to be outrageous. I'm going to discover that I got so fuck rolled over on this. <sighs> fuck a Rooney. Okay. Uh, we still are uh, need to actually heed uh, our switch it up uh, punishment that we got earlier, which means we got to do two more switches. So, Creamsicle, you're back out. Hopefully you don't get chewed up too badly. Thankfully not. Uh, and now we switch back out to our friend Blueberry the War Turtle. <clears throat> ah. And here we go. Okay, I'm going to put faith that our next critical hit is not going to happen for another two minutes. And I'm going to use that brief window of opportunity to talk about each of the games that I'm planning on getting from the 3DS and Wii U eShops before they should perish. Uh, starting from the top with the Wii U eShop, uh, I started out by saying that I was planning on getting Star Fox Guard. Star Fox Guard's $20, and I remember when it came out, a lot of people being like, hey, like, Star Fox Zero, kind of a so-so game, not exactly the greatest thing ever, not the greatest thing that uh, Shigeru Miyamoto and Platinum Games have kind of put their stamp on, but Star Fox Guard, kind of a cool, innovative little game that kind of makes use of the Wii U gamepad in some novel ways. For $20, I figure, you know what, it probably wouldn't hurt to, you know, have this thing as something that I can kind of go back to. I really, it doesn't seem like the kind of game that's ever going to be uh, re renewed for the Nintendo Switch, so might as well pick it up now before I lose the opportunity to do so. Uh, then there's Little Inferno. Now, Little Inferno is interesting because it was actually made by the, C the same um, indie development team uh, that originally made uh, World of Goo, if you remember that from back in the day. World of Goo was an indie game on the Wii that was so popular at the time of its release that people on like major outlets, major websites like IGN actually awarded it like Wii Game of the Year over like Super Smash Bros. Brawl and 
Mario Kart 8, which you would think that the latter two games would like top everyone's list at the end of that year, but IGN and company saw fit to uh, give it to World of Goo. I definitely want to give World of Goo another shot. And the good thing is that nowadays it's actually not too hard to do because there was a modern port of World of Goo that was released for the Switch relatively recently. I don't remember if there was also a port for PlayStation and Xbox consoles. In any case, it's not hard to play that particular game. Um, Little Inferno, on the other hand, it was their follow-up to World of Goo, and I remember at the time it didn't get great reviews. Uh, the whole premise of with Little Inferno is that you're basically just perpetually burning stuff inside of a fire, and like apparently that's the extent of the gameplay. Like it's this weird kind of I experimental, trying to make a statement kind of experience that didn't really go over perfectly with critics, but that I am interested in really checking out and that I especially want to make sure I download on the Wii U because it doesn't seem like the kind of game that will probably ever get re-released on account of the fact that it just didn't really seem to do it for a lot of people in the way that World of Goo did. Uh, after that, uh, the next game I'm planning on getting for the Wii U is Mini Mario and Friends Amiibo Challenge. Uh, this game is actually free to play, so there's kind of no reason not to get it. Uh, the whole deal with that game, as I understand it, is that uh, you gotta uh, use the Amiibos that you already own uh, to basically create a bunch of Mini Mario and Friends, and those will uh, serve as the kind of core gameplay of the experience, that experience being something that I gotta be honest, I don't really know. This is a game that I had completely forgotten existed on the Wii U until I kind of combed through lists of interesting games to download uh, on the Wii U before its eShop goes offline, so I suppose I will find out in real time. Um, and then next up, at number four, we got uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X. Um, I am really planning on making a big push to get into the Xenoblade series after hearing just how renowned um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 has been earlier this year. I feel like it's high time that I finally kind of toss my hat in the ring and kind of really come to understand what's up with Monolith Software's sort of premier breakout RPG series. Um, and Xenoblade Chronicles X is the one game in the series that has not yet made its way to the Switch. I think there's actually a not impossible opportunity that it could eventually get ported to the Switch. Before I eventually purchase all these games, I am going to make a judgment call of like, all right, what's the odds that some of these games will eventually get ported to uh, new consoles later on? Um, and then, you know, make the decision from there of whether or not I actually want to go through it making some of these purchases. So we'll see. But I remember, man, being so impressed with some of those trailers when that game was just first coming out, watching like cars transform into mechs and then back in the cars in real time. So cool so cool and it's yeah it's just kind of weird that that game's been landlocked on this wii u because like there are other games like for example like Star Fox zero which have not yet made their way to the switch and it's kind of like well i kind of get why that one has hasn't because that one was you know kind of a stinker on the wii u but this one i mean by all accounts pretty well regarded across the board kind of weird it hasn't made the jump Whew. Uh, next game that we got coming up, uh, number five, uh, Sonic Lost World uh, and its DLC. So I actually really loved um, Sonic Colors on the Wii. I think that game is sublime, and it's too bad that its um, port uh, for the Switch didn't turn out so great because that game is really good and a, a, a real kind of underrated gem within the kind of Sonic library. Um, and I was a little disheartened to hear that Sonic uh, Lost World wasn't really able to kind of live up to its predecessor's level of quality. But I remember back in the day, uh, its two uh, DLC packs, which are themed around Zelda and Yoshi, uh, were both apparently pretty, pretty, pretty good, uh, if all accounts are to be believed. And it, like those are the kind of things that, you know, you could conceivably imagine never being kind of ported or kind of modernized or updated for anything else because they're so specifically Nintendo. You can easily see, you know, Lost World making its way to other consoles, but, uh, you know, <laughs> um, the Lost World Nintendo DLCs, 
I think there's a fat chance we ever see those again, so I'm definitely going to want to get in on those. And I have heard from some people that apparently, like, th those, uh, Mar uh, sorry, not Mario, uh, Yoshi and Zelda DLCs are, like, pretty good, that they might even be better than the rest of the package. So we'll see. Uh, the sixth game, uh, Star Fox Zero, The Battle Begins, plus training. Uh, I've been told that apparently this is like a unique, like, predecessor to the main package that is Star Fox Zero that is like pretty different uh, from anything that's in the main game. Apparently it's like entirely original content. Apparently it's also free, so that's my main reason for kind of getting it. Number seven, Pokemon Ranger. Um, so I played uh, the second uh, Pokemon Ranger game, Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Almia, enjoyed it a lot. And then I got quite a bit through the third Pokemon Ranger game, Guardian Signs, and I dropped off of it. And I don't know if I'll ever come back to it, but I have always wanted to get into the original Pokemon Ranger because I've been told by many people that it's still uh, quite a good, fun little jaunt. Uh, and so I figure might as well get it right here and right now. Um, it's not impossible that Nintendo will, you know, make it so that you can get your hands on DS games in the future, but at least right now, it's sort of hard to uh, imagine in what circumstance they would do so, considering that the Nintendo Switch doesn't really have the two screen situation like the Wii U did, which is why Pokemon Ranger was even able to be on it in the first place. Uh, number eight, uh, Super Mario World, Super Mario Advance 2. Um, that game uh, is one of those games that I'm surprised I never played back in the day because I got a ton of quality time out of my Game Boy Advance. Um, and yeah, I loved Super Mario World back on the SNES, so I think that that's a pretty winning combination. That's one of those games that, you know, it, it's not so difficult to get that game uh, through other means, if, if you, you know, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, happen to know of those other means, but I figure it probably wouldn't hurt to, uh, you know, have it on the, uh, big screen, have it legitimately on my Wii U, uh, and it is only like $7.99 on the Wii U's eShop, so, you know, why not? And then Trauma Team, uh, the ninth Wii U game I'm planning on getting. That game uh, is a game that I had long wanted to get for the original Wii, but I never was able to get it. I got Trauma Team First Blood and Trauma Team... Uh, no, I got Trauma Center First Blood and Trauma Center Second Opinion. I believe those were the names of the two games that came before it. But Trauma Team is the one that everyone said that you gotta get. I was never able to get my hands on it, and so I figured that now's no better time than ever to finally uh, download it and play it. And yeah, uh, going over some of the 3DS games that I plan on getting. Liberation Maiden, I've heard that that's a like fun little indie game from Suda and company that will make for maybe like a fun afternoon or so if it doesn't not say it's welcome. Pocket Card Jockey, that's the um, <laughs> non-Pokemon Game Freak uh, developed game for the 3DS. One of many, actually. There was also that like rhythm platforming game that I played and thought was fine. Uh, I I've generally enjoyed Game Freak's um, non-Pokemon games, so I'm hopeful that that one will live up to expectations. Uh, Attack of the Friday Monsters! Exclamation point, Tokyo Tale. I've been told that that's like an interesting little narrative game about kaiju that like apparently have like a vacation spot on Friday that they go to or something like that. I don't know. Uh, Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. This is like a weird experimental microtransaction game from early in the 3DS's um, life cycle or maybe like kind of like midway through. It's zero dollars. Might as well pick it up. Uh, Nintendo Badge Arcade. Uh, this was like another experimental uh, Nintendo like eShop uh, like uh, what do you call like microtransaction game where you, you can get like badges that you can put on your like DS's like uh, like homepage as it were. I think it'll be fun again at zero dollars. Uh, Sakura Samurai Art of the Sword. This game uh, I remember hearing really good things about and it's $11.29 figure might as well. These are all in Canadian, by the way, because uh, of course I'm from Canada. Uh, number seven, Dark Void Zero. So this game, uh, if you remember, was released side by side with uh, Dark Void, uh, the Nolan North um, 
action game uh, from back during the PlayStation 3 360 era. Uh, that was not well reviewed, but Dark Void Zero, which is like an 8-bit demake, um, apparently like actually really kind of ruffled people's feathers in the good way. So I'm going to give that one a shot. Uh, and it's only $5, so it's like, come on, why not? Um, Fire Emblem Fates, I mean, pretty self-explanatory. I'm planning on also really getting into the old Fire Emblem series, and I really kind of want to see everything that uh, those Fate games have to offer. Uh, I'm not getting Fire Emblem Awakening because I looked into kind of like the Nintendo DS, like physical market, and it seems like it's a little bit easier to get your hands on a Fire Emblem Awakening if you... Uh, should uh, so choose to get a physical copy of it. Uh, Professor Layton, all the Professor Layton games, including Professor Layton versus Phoenix, right, are me just sort of catching up on every Professor Layton game that I missed uh, on the uh, 3DS during that era. Uh, and I am, let me tell you, I'm really excited to get into those uh, games because the first three Professor Layton games uh, for the DS, those were some of my favorite games for that console. I especially I'm very fond of uh, Diabolical Box. I thought that game brought a lot of fun new improvements to the kind of latent formula. Um, and on top of that, had like kind of a melancholic, but very kind of like emotionally cathartic little story that I really appreciated. Uh, Rhythm Thief and the Emperor's Treasure. This is a game that has sort of been bumming around my 3DS library for quite some time. Uh, not bumming around my library, but bumming around my head in terms of being, oh, this is a game I should add to my 3DS library for quite some time. By the way, we've not had a crit in like 10 minutes. I am amazed. I am <laughs> utterly stupefied. Let's let's keep it like that. I'm, I know I'm going to jinx myself like that, but I just want to express my gratitude and appreciation to the world right here and right now. Um, and yeah, so I figure I might as well finally get my hands on Rhythm Thief and see how it goes. Uh, and finally, last but not least, Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, the remake uh, for the 3DS. I was a huge fan of the original version of this game back in the day. I thought it was kind of a, a weird choice to have that studio, uh, Alpha Dream, like remake that game. Uh, considering that the original still looks quite good. Now, it was a game that was, like, you know, landlocked to the original Game Boy Advance, so I get remaking it, because it's like, well, this is not, like, a, a game that's, like, super easy for a lot of people to get their hands on in the first place. Um, in any case, I I also looked into getting Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, the, the remake of that game that came out for the 3DS. I don't think I'm going to bother, because, again, much like uh, Fire Emblem, uh, the, what is it, Awakening, much like Awakening, seems like the kind of game that's still kind of easy to get as a physical copy if you really need to. It's not overly priced at the moment. So, yeah, and also, like, Superstar Saga has always been my preferred game uh, in the Mario and Luigi series, so I think I'm just going to kind of stick with that one for now. We've been at this grind session for quite a bit of time. I hope that you guys have found my insight into what 3DS and Wii U games are planning on getting interesting. Uh, you know what? We wanted to uh, get our beloved Creamsicle, uh, our beloved Magikarp, up to level 15, but the way things are currently looking, it seems like it's going to actually take a little bit longer to get there, so you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on getting Blueberry to level 22. Once he gets to level 22, irregardless of where uh, Creamsicle is at, uh, we are going to head to Nugget Bridge and we're going to continue to level up from there and beyond because we need to get we need to get a third Pokemon into our team because we can't rely on just War Turtle, aka Blueberry. Uh, eventually, when we evolve Creamsicle into a Gyarados, like that will be a huge, uh, tremendous uh, surge in power in terms of our, uh, you know, <laughs> the overall kind of uh, structure of our team. But yeah, right now we don't quite have the liberty to do that. <clears throat> Ugh, excuse me. Whew. I think we just will need to battle one more Pokemon that is uh, resplendently filled to the brim with experience points, and we will be able to level them up. And that'll be very nice. Very nice. 
I don't remember what level um, Misty's star me is at, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I'm pretty certain that her star me uh, is no higher than level 24. Uh, speaking of getting new Pokemon, we actually are going to need to uh, be on the lookout for a Pokemon that is not a water type Pokemon going forward, because we need to make sure that we have somebody who can properly counter Surge when we get to his gym. Right now, our only two Pokemon are water types, and yeah, not two types that are not great against Surge, especially Gyarados, who will be um, water flying type and uh, particularly hurt by Raichu and company's Thunderbolts. So that's something we're going to have to be considerate of. Going to do a quick little, little bit of healing. The good thing about Nugget Bridge is, unlike the Trainer House uh, from early in the game in Pokemon Emerald, um, we can, of course, go back and heal ourselves at any point. Uh, we don't need to concern ourselves with, um, you know, <coughs> uh, like committing ourselves to each and every kind of battle on Nugget Bridge. Um, so that's a good thing. Uh, that being said, if we should happen to get a crit and if our prize wheel should happen to land on the spot titled uh, No Center, uh, we won't be able to go to another Pokemon Center until we get our next crit. So wishing for the best. Now, what I'm curious about is, are all of the trainers on this bridge aligned with Team Rocket? Because there's a Team Rocket dude at the very end of the bridge uh, who tries to recruit you uh, into the villainous team, but we don't really know what the deal is with all these other trainers. Have they just been kind of roped into the scheme without really understanding who's pulling the strings? If anybody in the chat knows what the deal is up with these dudes, by all means, let me know. I am, um, I'm actually gonna, I'm not gonna swap out for Weedle because this guy has the possibility of poisoning me and I don't wanna suffer from poison damage. Ooh, this would be a good Pokemon to use uh, Creamsicle on because if he had access to Tackle, uh, he could take this guy out without e ever needing to fear getting KO'd, but unfortunately he does not have Tackle at the moment, so we're going to have to swap back into Blueberry. Wah, wah. Goodbye, Metapod. Metapod's sprite uh, in this game almost looks like he's... Stick with me on this. He almost looks like he's planking. Like, he looks like he's doing that weird, like, viral meme from, like, the early... 2010s that I remember being featured in a Smosh video, but I don't really remember being featured in a whole lot else. No, you know what it was? It wasn't planking, it was snailing. There was a, a Smosh video where they were doing what they were called snail, what, what they were calling snailing, and I think the whole joke was that they were making fun of planking. So where... There was some other famous video where they were doing planking, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, here we go. Level up. We only have nine attack, but we finally have our first attacking move. So, hey, we got that going for us. Uh, You know what? I'm going to go ahead. There's a not impossible chance that this trainer has a grass type Pokemon. And so if she does, I'm just going to have War Turtle at the front of the party. Um, if there's a Pokemon that I can safely switch into next, uh, I will do it at my soonest opportunity. Okay, Pidgey, not bad. Very manageable. I don't want to use up all my water gun PPs while we're at it. Oh, here we go. It's good old Oddish. Thank God we have Bite at our disposal, because this thing packs a punch. Look at that. Flinch. Woo. Thank God this <laughs> isn't... Um, my critical lock run isn't for both flinching and critical hits. Yeah, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to bite this guy. 
Wow, look at that. I, I didn't even plan that out. It was just me getting lucky. And after our incredibly bad <laughs> critical hit luck early on in this route, we're finally, finally turning things around. Um, I have a feeling that this guy probably will not have a ton of grass type Pokemon on his team, so I'm going to swap out to Radita for this dude. Ooh, this is actually the perfect Pokemon to swap out to War Turtle for, actually. And the perfect move to use when you're about to get killed by Water Gun. Goodbye. Ooh, Ekans. That guy, uh, much like Weedle, has the opportunity to potentially paralyze or poison me, so I'm actually going to stay out uh, with Blueberry for this one. <laughs> Excuse me. Man, he, he couldn't have chosen a weaker move. Goodbye. Oh, no crits. It's almost... Almost a little bit quiet, if I gotta be totally honest. Uh, let's see, we got two more trainers left, and then we got the Rocket Dude at the very end. You know what? Uh, considering that we are just about to level up, I'm actually gonna go to the wild area over here in Route 4, and I'm just gonna battle one of you old Pokemon so we can level up, so we can put ourselves at a ever so slight advantage against whoever is next. Actually, you know what? Let's go see. I'm just curious. How strong is Creamsicle's tackle against this level 8 Sphero? Let's see. Not bad. That's actually not that bad. I mean, it's not that good now that he's had his attack lowered. Let's just see if we can... I want to see if we can seal the deal with this battle. Oh. Now it's actually becoming a little bit of a risk factor. Uh, come on, Spiro. Just let me... Just let me at him. Let me at... Come on! Urgh. Just... Oh, shit! I mean, here's the thing. I would have preferred to have a critical hit happen at maybe any other point in time during my stream instead of right then and there. I definitely didn't need that critical hit, but nevertheless... That's not my choice to make. Let's spin the prize wheel of criticality after like a, a half hour of not doing so. One, two, and three. Five push-ups. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to do five push-ups. I got a water bottle at hand, and I'm going to make sure that I use it after this. Ugh. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Whew. That's a good little workout. Not the worst thing in the world. <sighs> Back to the grind. By Sandshrew. And with that, we are at level 23. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I'm just gonna run from this one. Thank God, Magic Art for 
all its uh, frailness is like a pretty fast Pokemon. I think it has like a speed set of like 80. It's like pretty impressive. All right. Thank you, Nurse Joy. One, two, three, and four. Okay. She might have Grassite Pokemon on her team, but if the prior trainer is anything to go by, oh, here we go. Her first Pokemon will not be Grass-type. That is actually, that's pretty, like a pretty high level Pokemon actually compared to some of the other Pokemon we've been facing. All the other Pokemon have been like level 10, level 11. This guy's level 16. He could have evolved into a Nidorino. <clears throat> oh man, it was always so cool when your Nidoran male or female got access to uh, Double Kick, but unfortunately, <clears throat> Those double kicks were just never all that powerful, even when used against Pokemon that were really, like, critically hurt by Fighting-type moves, like uh, Rattata, for example. They just didn't do a lot of damage. Uh, and with that, we got our next critical hit. It seems like uh, the scales are finally tipping against our favor, so let's go ahead and... Whoops! That is uh, the wrong... Uh, camera view that we want to switch to. As you can see, we've got quite a, a bag of tricks of different camera views. That was not the right one we wanted to go to. This is the right one. So I gotta drink some water from my water bottle. I gotta remember to do that. Ah, uh, <laughs> 10 push ups. Ah. <sighs> Look, we're not dropping a whole bunch of items or doing some stuff that would, you know, really make a squeal in game. Let me just drink some water first, but man, this is <laughs> 10 push ups. <clears throat> All right, let's do this. Seriously hope that's the last time we got to do that on this stream. <sighs> that was some real heavy mouth breathing into that mic. I hope that you forgive me. Oof, I feel dizzy. <sighs> All right, back to the grind. How's our team holding up? You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna put Blueberry at the front of the party for this dude. Mankey? Oh. It's been a little while since we've seen this guy. I was kind of hoping to catch him in that one route where you could have caught him early on, but... No can do. Wasn't happening. I encountered a Radita instead. By the way, I know I'm probably mispronouncing Radita's name. You'll have to you'll have to forgive me for that. Okay, normally I would not be this overly cautious, but that Mankey was level 18, which means there's a not impossible chance that 
The Team Rocket Grunt we're about to battle might have Pokemon that are slightly higher level than that. It's been a while since I played this game, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to heal up my team real quick. And then we'll be back up and at him once more. And then we will finally be able to capture uh, a new Pokemon and add him to our team. Kind of funny, by the way, how we just went from Route 4 to Route 24. Congratulations, you beat our five contest trainers. You just earned a fabulous prize. Thank you. By the way, how would you like to join Team Rocket? We're a group of professional criminals specializing in Pokemon. See, this is... There's a lot of things within the Pokemon universe that are very inaccurate. But this guy saying, oh... Why not join Team Rocket? We're a group of professional criminals specializing in Pokemon. You're being way too on the nose there, buddy. You gotta be like, oh no, you have to understand, we're not professional criminals. We're a, a group of, like, you know, identitarians uh, that believe uh, that the pursuit of what one wants within the Pokemon universe is paramount to everything. They would, like, absolutely try to dress it up nowadays if this game was made in 2022. Being this forward, just being this straight up, like, I am fucking evil. <laughs> uh, there's not much else to it. That is, I, th this just would not fly nowadays. I seem to remember in the original version of these games that you could actually choose yes. And that even if you chose yes, you wouldn't actually get to join Team Rocket for whatever reason. I'm I'm curious what happens in the original game. Does does the Team Rocket grunt go like, oh nah, I don't really get a lot of passion from you, my boy. I think that uh, you need to be taught a lesson first. Or maybe he's like, oh, you know what? Okay. Uh, you get to be part of Team Rocket. Well, here's your uh, initiation battle to see how good of a trainer you are. And then maybe when he loses, he's like, fuck it. Even though I said that you could become a part of Team Rocket, I'm not interested in you anymore. You're too good for us. Or maybe he gets like just... I don't know. It's too bad the game doesn't let you choose anymore. Because I was all for uh, jamming yes uh, when the option would have been presented to me, but alas, it was not presented. And that's weird. He doesn't go away, even though we already know who he is. Well, that's a trainer, I want to say. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I just want to a hundred thousand percent confirm uh, right now. If we open up our town map. Uh, yep, this is Route 24. And oh, wow, look at that. At the very end, we got Route 25, which means we have more opportunities to get even more Pokemon uh, than what we already have right now. Uh, let's go ahead and let's capture someone in here. Again, hopefully it'll be somebody who we can use to counter... Um, what's his face? Um, Lieutenant Surge. Okay. Uh, Weedle. I'm gonna be a thousand percent honest with you guys. Was kind of hoping it would be somebody else other than Weedle. That being said... Uh, Weedle does evolve into Beedrill, which is a Pokemon that has uh, a decent attack stat and that is not weak towards uh, electric type moves on account of the fact that he is uh, part bug and part poison type. So in a pinch, he could actually prove decently useful against Lieutenant Surge. Shit, critical hit. Well, I guess I know what we're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring in the prize cam and spin the prize wheel of criticality. One, two, and three. Motherfucker! All right, ladies and gentlemen, give me just a quick second so I can... down as much water as I'm gonna need to be able to get through this. I swear, this game is out to get me. This game has become self-aware. It knows what's up. It knows how to tighten the screws, and it is tightening them real quick and real fast and real dirty. Oh, man. You better believe that I'm 
true in terms of what I'm saying right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. to the grind now I gotta be honest with you guys <laughs> I was kind of hoping that uh, he actually would not crit hair crit there I am happy that Magikarp I uh, didn't take out Weedle but now that his HP has been lowered enough I'm concerned that another accidental crit might take him out so we got to start checking our pokeballs now Yes, got him. Uh, in Pokemon Fire Red, uh, you're much more likely to find Caterpie around here, but because this is Leaf Green instead, we're finding Weedles. All right, what do we want to call this guy? I know. Cinnabon. There we go. Uh, and I'm gonna I'll keep him at the back of the party for the time being because uh, I'm gonna want to heal him up first before uh, We go and start training him up. Oh look at that. We can actually That's odd. I thought we would mostly just encounter Weedle around here and not Caterpie Well, I'm glad it was Weedle because again, we can actually use this guy against uh, Lieutenant Surge if we need to That being said, I'm not certain how much we'll end up using him in the long term. Another good thing about Weedle is that he levels up relatively quickly. And, you know, the downside to that is that, of course, Beedrill is not exactly the strongest Pokemon in the world, but all we got to do is literally level this dude up three times, and we got ourselves a Beedrill already. So, that's nice. <sighs> I am telling you guys, I am literally transforming and melting into a human furnace because of <laughs> the amount of push-ups I've done within the past hour and a half. I am becoming a literal human inferno. Oh, hey! Nice of you to notice my incredible Nugget Bridge feat. Speaking of which, I should probably spend that money and spend it on items really soon. Because sooner or later, I'm going to spin the prize wheel and it's going to land on <laughs> the uh, go broke spot and force me to sell uh, a whole bunch of items so that I have no money left. So, better be mindful to do that at my soonest opportunity. Goodbye, Radita. Ooh, oh dear. If this provides him with just enough experience points, we should be able to level him up at the end of this battle. So that's pretty cool. Ah, come on. You got to do that? I don't have any antidotes on me. Uh, but then again, I did want to go back into town so that I could uh, get my hands uh, on some sweet, sweet items from the Pokemon Mart. So maybe this works out, actually. Goodbye, Ekans. And there we go. Goodbye, Shane. We got some money from that, too. That's pretty nice. Unfortunately, there are not a whole lot of good TMs that we can teach this dude at the moment, so we're going to probably be stuck with, like, Poison Sting and Twin Needle and whatever the hell he has. 
uh, when he'll just be a normal ass speed roll, but we'll manage. All right. Uh, unfortunately, we're poisoned at the moment, which means that we're going to take <laughs> some damage with every step. But we have 42 hit points, so we should be OK. <sighs> I will say, I am real hot, real sweaty, real melty, a, a real kind of human inferno in the making, in the combusting, but today was actually weirdly cold in Montreal. I, I've talked about this on prior streams that I've done before, but the weather in Montreal this summer has been all over the freaking place. Uh, I went on a trip to Barcelona in Spain um, in the the middle of my summer uh, in the middle of June and <laughs> while I was there it was like incredibly unbelievably hot just absolutely kind of sweltering um, and after I came back uh, from Montreal the kind of hot weather that I experienced in Barcelona more or less kind of carried over to Montreal it was like quite hot uh, in, in Montreal from there on out but before my trip to Barcelona it was so weirdly cold. I don't understand at all what was going on. It was so unbelievably bizarre. I'm just going to buy a couple of um, healing items just in case we need them in a pinch. Unlike in uh, Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, uh, we don't have access to... Um, what is it? Uh, we don't have access to the flutes that allow us to like wake up out of being asleep or confusion or what have you. Uh, let's see here. I guess I can use an escape rope. I kind of want to use up as much of my money right now because <laughs> it's only so long before the prize wheel lands on drop five and I'm forced to drop five of my items. So the more items that I can pick and choose from to drop from my bag, the better. Even though I might not necessarily need to, you know, might not necessarily end up using a whole lot of these. I will buy a burn heal, though, because certainly can't hurt. Problem is, is that the, the selection of items that they have here isn't exactly the best of all time. We'll have to wait until a little bit further into our adventure before we get the likes of, you know, super balls, hyper potions, you know, the really good stuff. Uh, before we continue with the show, uh, remember, as always, you can catch the show you're currently watching live on twitch.tv slash cozy rare live uh, every Monday and every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST. Uh, I appreciate however you choose to support the show, be it by following, subscribing, or by an honest to goodness donation. But if you don't have a loony or toonie to toss my way, it's no big deal. I will still be here no matter what. Uh, and with that out of the way, let's go ahead and let's continue leveling up our good friend Cinnabon the Kakuna, because you know that he needs those levels. Well, look at this, a new nice little item. What is it? Hey, it's a tract. Kind of situationally useful, but we'll definitely, you know, want to keep a good lock on it. Okay, a lot of hiker dudes who are definitely going to be easy experience fodder for War Turtle. But before we battle them, we got to check out who's hiding in the grass around here so we can add our fourth member to our team. Well, lo and behold, it's Bellsprout, a Pokemon that actually is genuinely pretty useful uh, against the upcoming gym battle that we're going to have uh, with ye old Lieutenant Surge on account of the fact that he is a grass type Pokemon and thus not hit very effectively by uh, Lieutenant Surge's uh, electric type moves. Now, here's what I'm trying to figure out. I think what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to swap into Blueberry. I don't know whether or not Bellsprout has any grass type moves. He has Wrap. Okay. I think that if I do just a single tackle with Blueberry, I will avoid KOing it in one hit, but I will do a lot of damage. Okay. So it's got growth, it's got wrap. I wonder what else does it have? Uh, let's see. I got 11 Pokeballs. Might as well start throwing and see if we can get our Bellsprout into a ball. Yes! 
Guys, you have no clue how <laughs> excited I was to watch Bellsprout go in his ball that fast. Now, this is real exciting because, you know, typically in the past, I've not really played Pokemon Leaf Green. I've played Pokemon Fire Red. And in Pokemon Fire Red, typically you only tend to encounter Oddish around here. Bellsprout uh, and his evolutions are really more exclusive to Pokemon Leaf Green. So it's exciting that we're finally getting to use this guy. What do I want to call this guy? Uh, I know an easy, an easy thing is to be like, oh, let's call him like some sort of plant-based food name. But I'm thinking of something else, something else that has, that is known for being yellow within the culinary world. Ooh, I know, I know. Let's call this dude. Rigatoni. Ah. All these letters are eluding me. There we go. Rigatoni. Welcome to the team, Rigatoni. Now, based on the moves that you were using in the prior battle, I have a feeling that you don't know how to use any grass type moves, do you? Let's see. Oh, you do! You know how to use Vine Whip. You know, it's only a base 35 power move, but that's not. certainly not bad at all. Um. Let's see, I actually would like to use him in battle against some of those hikers, so I'm actually going to go back to town and heal. Again, I'm not usually this overly cautious when it comes to going back and forth to them Pokemon centers to help heal up my Pokemon, but... This time around, I want to play things real safe, considering that we are only just building up our team after everything that happened <laughs> uh, earlier on. Okay, Rigatoni, you are going to the front. Don't worry, Cinnabon, we will give you the tender TLC that you uh, deserve very soon. You will become a Beedrill yet. Maybe, don't know if you'll necessarily get a lot of action in the Misty Gym battle, but yeah. Oh, and, and that's a good point, actually. Uh, assuming that I uh, succeed in leveling him up sufficiently and he doesn't die along the way, uh, I should be able to use Bellsprout uh, in the upcoming Misty Gym battle as well. Okay, Machop. Now, <laughs> Machop, obviously, not a Rock-type Pokémon or a Ground-type Pokémon, but he does, um, have access pretty much exclusively to normal and Fighting-type moves. Fighting-type moves, uh, of course, are his stab. Uh, however, however, they're not very effective against Rigatoni, who is a part Poison-type Pokémon, so let's use Vine Whip and see how much damage that does. Okay. Not that bad. Um, here's the thing, though. I think this guy doesn't have a lot of defense. Yeah, I'm looking at the stats right now. This guy has only 18 defense. That's not a lot. Not a lot. By comparison, Magikarp has more. And this guy called uh, Blueberry, don't know if you've heard of him before, has a whole ton more. So we're going to swap into him, but the moment that a Geodude or a, a Onix comes out, we're swapping back out. Uh, to our good friend, Rigatoni. Goodbye, Macha. Ah, uh, critical hit. Why you gotta do this, man? Why you gotta give out them critical hits the moment, the freaking moment that you manage to completely kill a Pokemon? This is gonna have to be a rule that we're gonna have to institute in the future, that if I get a critical hit and it knocks out a Pokemon, it's invalidated. I'm almost thinking about doing it because it feels like 90% of the critical hits that end up resulting in us having to spin the Wheel of Criticality, they, they result from situations like that. All right. One, two, and three. Ooh, dry Pokemon, the one spot on our Wheel of Criticality, that doesn't make me want to break my fingers. Uh, let's go ahead and let's swap out the prize cam. <clears throat> this, of course, is where I uh, get my hands on my handy-dandy notebook uh, and use it to draw a Pokémon from memory. Now, 
If nobody has any suggestions as to which Pokemon I should draw from memory, uh, I can always go to a Pokemon randomizer website and choose uh, what Pokemon I should draw from memory there. But if somebody in the chat has a suggestion, uh, by all means speak up and I will definitely heed it, assuming that it is, of course, an actual Pokemon. Don't come at me with any of your Gabumon, Agumon jokes trying to trick me into thinking those are Pokemon. I know those are Pokemon. Those are Digimon. All right, uh, let's go ahead and let's bring in our desk cam so we can have a, a better view of the drawing space before us where we will be drawing our beautiful, illustrious Pokemon from memory. Uh, and if there are no takers in the comments as to what Pokemon we should draw from memory, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, randomize the selection. Give me just a second. All right, I'm on randompokemon.com. I'm going to press the generate button. There are no more takers. And here we go. Wigglytuff, the random Pokemon that we are drawing right here and right now, uh, is Wigglytuff, uh, a much beloved Gen 1 Pokemon that we have not yet encountered on our run. Uh, not that that's going to stop us. Uh, let's go ahead and let's do so. All right. So the thing about Wigglytuff is that Wigglytuff is like a stretched out balloon. We all know Jigglypuff and we all know how he's like a little lovable little puffball of balooniness. Wigglytuff is like if you took Jigglypuff and you just kind of stretched him out. It's actually a little bit disappointing that he's like that. Like you'd hope that a, that an evolution to Jigglypuff would just maybe look a, a little bit more interesting. Wigglypuff is also one of those Pokemon that like I feel is kind of largely just forgotten and abandoned about. Like. You, you look at Clefairy, for example, both Clefairy and Clefable, like very beloved Pokemon that like both receive a lot of attention in all the games that they appear in. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm getting the, the curl on Wigglytuff's head exactly correct, but I think I, I think I got it. I think I got the gist of it. Uh, let's see here. He, he has like kind of longish feet, very, very similar to, to, to Jigglypuff's feet uh, for context, but, you know, a little bit longer like such. I think that's pretty good. Um, let's see. I think I should have like one one of Wigglytuff's arms inside like this, and then I should have uh, another one of Wigglytuff's arms like extending out of this. So it's, you know, greeting us, letting us know that it's a, a non-harmful -har creature that wants, you know, only our affection and love and ever undying respect. Uh... Wigglytuff's eyes, of course, are very large and round, much like Jigglypuff. Again, Wigglytuff is basically just a Jigglypuff that you've stretched out. There's really not a whole lot more to it than that. Now, getting getting the exact kind of like shading and coloration of its eyes are going to be difficult. I'm trying to think, like, how do I gotta I gotta do this? I gotta put like a couple little like dots on it like that to kind of like indicate that we're we're looking at a, a Pokemon with big, kind of glassy eyes like such. And I want to say that it has kind of like a, a little like cat-like mouth like that. Like it's not it's not just like a, a straight slit or you know what, maybe, you know, let's put a little let's put a little mouth, uh, a little mouth curl like that. Just to let you know that Wigglytuff is a very I inviting, nice Pokemon. Uh, I also remember that Wigglytuff has like a little kind of pouch thing, uh, not like a pouch thing, but like a, a specific section on its like body that is like, you know, colored a little bit differently from uh, how you would typically expect uh, its body to be colored based on Jigglypuff. I guess that's like the one way that Wigglytuff is really different from Jigglypuff is it does have that like section on its body that is like, I think, white colored. Uh, and finally, I almost forgot this, but I will not forget this. Wigglytuff has giant um, ears, kind of like Furby ears. Uh, and it has little sections in the middle. I was, I was looking at Wigglytuff and I was thinking, yeah, this guy looks weirdly, like, <laughs> why does he look so weirdly naked looking? And I was like, oh yeah, that's right. 
his ears aren't there. They're completely absent, completely gone. This really completes the picture, I think, ladies and gentlemen, that we managed to nail it. Let's go ahead and let's bring in the main camera view so that we can show off Wigglytuff and all his Wigglytuffly glory. I mean, what can I say? It's another successful artistic creation uh, from the ye old Cozy Bear Factory. I think that I truly nailed Wigglytuff and all his wiggly toughness, whatever that should so mean to you. Good job, Cozy. You're a good boy. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's bring the camera out and let's get back in the game. Oh. And look at that. Rigatoni gained a whole lot of experience points. So did Blueberry, but he did not level up. Uh, we, he is sending out a Geodude, however, which means that we have uh, an opportunity here to level up Rigatoni. Potentially. We'll see. Wow. That did a lot of damage. Well, ah, damn it. Couldn't you, couldn't you have just given him just a little bit more? Uh, I'm going to go ahead, considering he's uh, just about to level up. I'll just go in the grass here real quick. And level up Rigatoni and Blueberry. So whoever we face next in battle will uh, face the full wrath of us both being at level 24 and 15, respectively. I should learn Water Pulse, like, relatively soon, I want to say. If I don't learn it relatively soon, I will definitely teach myself the TM that I'm going to be able to obtain from Misty. Hey, Sleep Powder. That's a pretty useful move, actually. Ah, uh, I was kind of hoping I would level up. Oh, well. Here we go. Now, hopefully this guy will not have a Geodude at the front of his party like the previous dude. Oh, well, here we go. Onyx time. I don't think... Chances of us getting one hit KO'd here, I think, are pretty low. But that will do a lot of damage. And it's not even that much. Even if it had, that had critted, it wouldn't have been that bad. Whoa. Now that is a lot of experience points. <sighs> uh, yeah, we can swap back in Blueberry. So, I just took the second to look up at what point bell sprout evolves into weeping bell uh he evolves into weeping bell if you can believe it at level 21 which is way sooner than i was uh anticipating it would be i thought it was gonna be like level 23 or 24 even like level 25 21 is very attainable and very soon <clears throat> so i'm actually gonna work very hard to get him to that point uh before the missy gym battle because having weeping bell on our team will be very advantageous to us. Uh, I'm going to swap in actually Cinnabon for this guy, just so that we can level him up too. I, I don't expect that Beedrill will get a lot of um, work in the upcoming gym battle, but certainly it won't hurt to have him as somebody that we can fall back on if we need to. Plus, again, Beedrill, pretty powerful for this point in the game. Not very powerful in the long term, but, you know, pretty powerful for this point in the game. Not much else to say. Oh. oh. There's a high chance we'll get a crit off of the Fury attacks here, because he's attacking so many times in a row. Jesus, five times and not a single crit. Y you have to go back home and reevaluate your life after that happens. Goodbye. I thought he wouldn't turn around. I guess I was mistaken. Oh, Slowpoke. 
I don't know. This guy might actually have confusion. Or maybe he'll have water gun. Uh, do I want to risk it? No, I don't want to risk it. I'm swapping in Blueberry. Okay. I he might actually not have... <laughs> he might not actually uh, have access to any uh, uh, Psychic-type moves. And speaking of which, uh, we got a crit on our hands, which means that it's time to spin the Wheel of Criticality. Push-ups. Well, that's certainly not as many push-ups as we're used to doing these days. Let's bring in the proper camera view. Uh, let's move this out of the way. It's really getting tiring. Like, I'm really, like, struggling. One. Two. Three, four, five. There you go. Five. No more, no less. You can't say that I didn't deliver on my promise. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, you know what? I don't feel like going back to a Pokemon Center just yet. There we go. He needs it more than anyone else, so... Uh, you know what? For this trainer, she doesn't seem like she would have uh, a bunch of Pokemon on her that would be hurt particularly effectively by Vine Whip, so I'm gonna... I'm going to swap Kakuna to the front of the party so that I can swap in War Turtle. Earn him some easy XP. And here I thought, switching over to doing my streams on both Monday and Thursday, and having them start at 8.30, and only going for like two and a half hours would make my life that much easier and better. Oh boy. Oh boy. I, I did not know what I was getting into. <sighs> not as tiring uh, was actually something I did over the weekend, which was visit... Montreal's Otakuthon. Uh, Montreal's Otakuthon is, of course, uh, you know, Montreal's premier anime convention. Very popular, always a lot of fun, but over the course of the past couple of years, uh, they had done away with doing in-person events on account of the uh, global COVID-19 pandemic doing a, a real number on our world as a whole. Uh, and so uh, this past weekend, they finally did their first in-person event uh, for the first time since, and it was a lot of fun. Um, there were, unfortunately, not a whole lot of um, special guests or panels that really were of much interest to me, but uh, I did get a real kick uh, out of visiting the kind of artist alley kind of uh, floor where you can buy all sorts of cool knickknacks and doodads. That stuff was a lot of fun. Uh, I had a lot of fun checking out people's cosplays, some amazing cosplays. If you go over to my Twitter account, uh, at Alex Cozina, uh, you can see some of the pictures I was posting of some of the finer cosplays there. There's actually a very impressive cosplay that a guy did of Brock from Pokemon holding Onyx around his uh, neck. It wasn't like from a technical perspective, like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen, but it was just really kind of ingenious. Uh, on the subject of Pokemon cosplays, there was also a couple that did a like Nurse Joy and Brock cosplay. Uh, and get this, their baby carriage, because they brought their baby with them, 
was a Pokemon Center that they were keeping the baby all cooped up and safe inside of. So impressive. Uh, oh, and look at that. 17, not bad. And we I, might actually want to make use of Poison Powder. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we will keep growth and we will delete wrap. Good job, Rigatoni. Good job for being a useful ass Pokemon. Oh, and by the way, this is Hiker Knob, uh, named after the... What's his face? Uh, translator of all these early Pokemon games. Shout out to Knob. <clears throat> uh, and yeah, uh, lots of fun cosplay. I also... Uh, w one of the other big draws for me uh, for visiting um, these Pokemon uh, Otakuthon anime conventions is to also kind of be exposed to new anime that I haven't been exposed to before. That's the thing, like, when you blade through all of your anime options on Netflix or Crunchyroll, all the options that are being recommended to you are things that the algorithm thinks you might like. But at an anime convention, you actually have the benefit of uh, being able to check out uh, anime that were, that were personally kind of handpicked for you by the people that organized the events. Uh, people who thought, oh, these might be cool anime for you to check out. Uh, I saw two anime while I was there. The first one was called Vivi colon something something something. It's called Vivi. If, you, if you're familiar with Vivi, you probably already know what I'm talking about. Uh, about a uh, robot AI uh, songstress in the past that's got to uh, save the future by preventing a crazy robot uprising in the future. Seems interesting. There's a, a real fun, fast-talking AI in that show that has a lot of fun quips. Seems like there's more going on there than uh, is initially apparent on the surface, but I'll have to keep watching that anime at some point. The other anime was the 86. A bit of a <laughs> weird-ass show about uh, this nation uh, hanging out in the middle of nowhere. It looks vaguely Eurocentric. I don't really know what it's supposed to be based off of. Where, well, I mean, I kind of do know what it's supposed to be based off of, but it's going further into detail there would go into spoilers. In any case, uh, they are constantly fighting uh, this war uh, with the kind of former remnants of the uh, empire that previously occupied their country. Uh, and they're doing so, uh, they claim, via entirely ethical means. They're doing so via a drone army uh, that when said drones get destroyed, leave, of course, no human remains because drones are not humans. Uh, or so the show would like you to believe. Uh, that's all I'll say about it at the moment. There are some very interesting, fun reveals that happen within the first couple of episodes that definitely got me hooked into the show. I will definitely, most certainly, uh, want to continue watching that one as well. Like I said, it, it's always really fun to go to an anime convention and see what anime they got in store. Ooh, secret power. Because, again, it's always hand-picked. It's always... Uh, stuff that I'm going to just heal my Pokemon a little bit. It, it's always stuff that like somebody sat down and was like, you know, I think that these animes, I think that these shows are cool. I think that these shows are worth introducing to other people, not because algorithmically they're <coughs> worthwhile endeavors for the people that are going to watch them, but because I think that they're just good quality content, and I gotta appreciate that. Uh, while I was at Otakuthon, uh, I actually also uh, happened upon an unexpected old flame of mine. Fuck, I am poisoned. Uh, that old flame being Pokemon Puzzle League. Um, way back in the day, you better believe it when I say that I had a whale of a time playing all of the uh, Pokemon games that were available uh, on the Nintendo 64. I had a ton of fun with Pokemon Snap, ton of fun with Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Stadium Gold Silver. Uh, and when I learned that there was yet another Pokemon game on Nintendo 64, and it was called Pokemon Puzzle League, you better believe that I was over the moon excited to finally play it. I got it as a virtual console game on the Nintendo Wii. It, it was kind of like a late in the console's life cycle uh, virtual console game. I, I don't remember exactly when I got it, 
but I want to say it could have been as late as like 2012 or even 2013. And I remember back in the day sitting down, playing it and being like, oh, this is nothing like the other Pokemon games that <laughs> I know and love on the Nintendo 64. I don't know how much more of this I'm going to play. And I put it down and I basically never really touched it again. Um, and then as it would happen at Otakuthon over the weekend, uh, I was strolling through the video game room because, of course, they have a video game room where you know people are playing all sorts of games, many of them anime in nature. Uh, and one of the games that they were playing uh, was competitive uh, Pokemon Puzzle League. And I remember watching that and thinking, wow, these players are playing this game real impressively. I kind of am getting the itch to play a little bit of Pokemon Puzzle League myself. Uh, and so, lo and behold, I went back home. I got a couple of batteries out of my... Uh, whatchamacallit? Uh, why am I blanking on this? I got batteries out of my Xbox Series X controller and put them in my Nintendo uh, Wii controller because if you remember, that particular console uh, needed them batteries in order for them Wii remotes to function. Uh, thank God this guy only has Absorb. Actually, it might be... Do I want to swap into War Turtle? I feel like... I don't know. I don't, I don't have a whole lot of options here. I also don't have access to Vine Whip. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, I don't have a lot of options here. Yeah, saw people playing Pokemon uh, Puzzle League at the con, and I figured, you know what? There's no better time than now than to go back home and try out Pokemon Puzzle League again. Uh, got those batteries out of my Xbox Series X controller, plugged them into my uh, Wii Remote, and plugged my Wii Remote uh, into my Nintendo Wii Classic Controller. Uh, it's the Classic Controller that has like the black grips on the side of it. I don't remember what game I got it with. It might have been Monster Hunter Try, actually. And yeah, plugged those things in, opened up my Wii U, booted my Wii U into Wii emulation mode, um, used the Wii Remote to uh, turn on my copy of uh, Pokemon Puzzle League that I had downloaded in 2012 or 2013, possibly. And yeah, I had a whale of a time playing Pokemon Puzzle League. I actually beat the entire single player campaign in that game uh, on normal mode, uh, but now I got to go back and I got to uh, played again on hard mode in order to be uh, seen as a true Pokemon master. I gotta say, spoilers for Pokemon Puzzle League uh, for the campaign of that game, as it were. It's a little bit disappointing, just a little bit disappointing uh, that that game, <laughs> the final boss of that game is Bruno. Like, they don't even, like, I know that at that point in time, Lance was not a part of the Pokemon anime, but it's a little bit disappointing that they didn't just... <laughs> <laughs> resurrect Lance's corpse for that uh, particular <laughs> game or, you know, just figure out something or some cooler trainer. It's weird because like th the way that the campaign for that game builds things up, you would think that the puzzle master, the final person that you're going to face at the end of it is going to be Giovanni. But then you face Giovanni like halfway through. Uh, oh, I thought these guys were going to be trainers. Oh, I guess we'll have to go and visit Bill, resolve his thing. Yeah, you would think that um, Giovanni was going to be the final boss of Pokemon Puzzle League's uh, single-player campaign, but he's not. You find him like two-thirds of the way through, and then it's like, oh, you thought Giovanni was the final boss? Guess not. It's actually all these other trainers. And then you fight Bruno, and anticlimactically, the game just kind of ends. Here we go. Uh, of course, this is no mere uh, Clefairy. This is indeed Bill. It's kind of weird. I'm not joshing you, lady. Jeez, who translated this game? I know, it's Nob. Nob, you're a good guy. I love it. Um, it's kind of weird that there aren't exactly a whole lot of other Pokemon games after this one within the main series that involve people being transformed into Pokemons.
Here we go. I know that, like, obviously you have uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee that, you know, refeatures this particular um, kind of whole plot sequence again. Um, and, of course, you got Pokemon Sun and Moon where uh, Lusamine uh, combines herself with uh, that one Ultra Beast and becomes, like, Ultra Beast Lusamine or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but yeah, not a whole lot of instances of people becoming Pokemon, and I think it's a little disappointing. Of course, within the, you know, spin-off games like uh, the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, people transforming into Pokemon is like a huge plot device, but it always felt a little bit... <laughs> uh, what's the word for it? It, it always felt a little bit unsatisfying on the basis that you never actually get to see the people transform into the Pokemon. Like, you, you kind of want to see if a Pokemon game features people that transform into Pokemon, you kind of want to see the people become the Pokemon. You know what I mean? You kind of want to see the transformation occur in real time. Uh, our Pokemon aren't super banged up, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually heal them. Just to make sure that we're in good enough shape for the Rocket Grunt that we're going to take on. Uh, after that, I don't remember how far past Cerulean City we can go at the moment. I don't remember if we need to beat Misty or not. Um, either way, though... Us taking on and defeating Misty will be how we will close out the stream. Oh yeah, I forgot. This is where we get Dig. This is actually going to be great because Dig, let me tell you, a real useful, honest to goodness, good move. Hmm. Yeah, mo most definitely an innocent bystander. So innocent that you just stood still there the entire time, almost as if you were trying to figure out how to sneak back into the house to get more stuff from it. This is not good. This guy has I'm about to score a crit written all over him. So let's hope that we can take this guy out soon. Oh, this is going to crit. Oh, it's not a crit. Wow, K Karate Chop, that move already has an increased critical hit ratio. So the fact that it didn't crit, <laughs> that's bad luck on your part, Machop. Go home and rethink your life, just like that guy from Star Wars Episode 2 that wanted to sell Obi-Wan Death Sticks. Just gotta go home and rethink your life. Oh, good old Drowsy. Oh. Just barely missed. Too bad. Man, it is so great that we learned how to use Bite. Goodbye. Yay. Stun Spore. Hmm. Well, this is where the real question comes in. I want to keep Growth, and obviously we're keeping Vine Whip. We got Poison Powder, we got Sleep Powder, we got Sun Spore. All three of them have the same amount of accuracy chance. All three of them theoretically pretty useful, but I feel like... Hmm, I kind of feel like Poison Powder and Sleep Powder might be the most useful for me to have. Stun Spore, like, the problem is, is that it does lower the opponent's uh, speed, and it does give us a opportunity to potentially get a couple of free hits in while it's just completely paralyzed and unable to move. But I feel like, I don't know, I, Poison Powder and Sleep Powder are just the more certain choices to go with. So I feel bad making the decision, but I'm going to not teach it stunts for. Goodbye. Of course, this will be a useful move for when we eventually take on Lieutenant Surge. Route 9. Fortunately, we can't access this place just yet. Oh, wow. Here we go. Route 5. Uh, of course, we can't pass through to Saffron City yet because these dudes... So 
desperately need something that can quench their thirst. Uh, in the meantime, we're instead going to be taking the underground path to Vermilion City, but not just yet. Uh, while we're here, let's go ahead and let's catch ourselves a Pokemon. I am curious, though. It's been a little while since I played this game. If I bring up the town map, how far it is... Oh, wow. This is the extent of Route 5, huh? I guess... And that's Route 6. Okay, see, I was... In my head, I was wondering... Are Route 5 and Route 6, like, connected? It, are these are these both the same super route? But they're not, because Saffron City kind of bisects them. All right. I'm hoping that we can get someone on our team we don't currently have. Hmm. I mean, hey, having another Bellsprout on our team? Not the worst thing in the world. Bellsprout has proven a pretty decent Pokemon thus far. But... I gotta be honest with you guys, I was kind of hoping it would be someone else. Even if it was something that we've already caught before, like a Pidgey, like... I'd much rather prefer to have him on our team, but hey, if... If this particular Bellsprout uh, that we're currently using in battle should fall, we always can have uh, Rigatoni number two over here to take up the mantle. So, I guess that will probably work out fine. I'm pretty certain that in this gen, you can still do Sleep Powder on another Grass-type Pokémon. There we go. There we go. This should be easy pickings. But what do I want to call this guy? We're, we're nicknaming all of our Pokémon after food on this run. So if anybody has any suggestions, let me know, because I would be more than happy to hear them. Hmm. It will probably be some other type of noodle. Oh, tortellini. There we go. There we go. Just, it just barely fit inside its name. I'm curious. Uh, a damn it nature. Now that's, that's interesting. See, if I do decide later on to have two um, bell sprouts uh, and their evolutions on my team, that might actually work out because Rigatoni will be my uh, specially oriented bell sprout, the Pokemon that specializes more in grass type moves. Mm. Whereas Tortellini will be the more physically oriented of the two, the Pokemon that will specialize more in poison type moves. So this actually could work out if I do decide to use the two of them, but Maybe not right now. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Only a couple levels away. Uh, you know what? While we're here, let's go ahead and let's level up Cinnabon to level 10. And then I will continue, uh, my next little bit of training. Oh, hey, there we go. There's Meowth. I completely forgot he was hanging around here. Um, after that, I will continue my next little bit of training inside Misty's gym. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Oh, but man, Vine Whip does not have a lot of power points. Like, that's a pretty weak move, all things considered. Goodbye. I'll probably want to swap out to War Turtle for whoever is next, actually because Cinnabon's getting a little bit... Not Cinnabon. Um, Rigatoni's getting a little bit on the weak side. All right, also, I feel kind of bad that Creamsicle has not been given much of an opportunity to level up more, but... That'll, that'll definitely change as we go forward, especially once we manage to evolve him. It's not like you would necessarily get a whole lot of use from this gym battle anyways, so... Here we go. Cinnabon, welcome to Beedrill Land. Unfortunately, uh, in this gen, you can't learn how to use Drill Run, which means that we can't really teach you any cool stab moves that we can uh, use against Lieutenant Surge. Actually, he might be able to learn Dig, uh, but I don't think I would waste Dig on him anyways. 
Oh, Fury Attack. I thought he was going to learn how to use Twin Needle uh, at this level. Maybe I have to, like, train him up to, like, level 21 or something. I think that's it. Man, they really used to <laughs> design Pokemon Towns way more like mazes back in this gen. It wasn't like a straightforward, hey, how do you get to, from point A to point B in the city? It was like, how do you like three-dimensionally break apart this nonsensical Rubik's Cube to get to the route that is directly south of the city? Too much. Too much, if you ask me. All right. Uh, Rigatoni. You are going to the front because we need you to level up a little bit so that you can be ready for Misty. Who's this guy going to be? I suspect that our Misty Gym battle is probably going to go pretty easily. I think that unless we have any last minute nasty surprises, we'll probably be able to take out Misty no problem, and that will probably close out the stream arriving at Vermilion City, unless we should encounter a super challenging trainer on the way there. Man, I love Shelter's um, Fire Red Leaf Green Sprite. So good. So much better than his uh, Ruby Sapphire Emerald Sprite. And here we go. I think... Does... I think this trainer has Goldeen. Wow! Holy shit, I got it! Look at that, boys and girls. Your boy Cozy knows his pokes. If I could take this guy without having to swap out, that would be great. But I feel a little bit nervous, so I'm gonna actually swap into Blueberry for this one. Rigatoni does have very weak defense, so I don't feel like I'm being overly cautious. No, never mind. I should have just stayed in. All right. Fight time. Ooh, rapid spin. Is this more powerful than Tackle? No, it's not. Now, it does free me from Bind, Wrap, Leech Seed, and Spikes, but those are very situational moves that we're not necessarily going to see a lot of on this run. So, I don't love keeping Tackle on. I really should have taught him how to use Mega Punch, but... Um, yeah, I don't think that Rapid Spin is going to really service us well. All right. I'm just going to do a quick little bit of outside training so that we can get Bellsprout to level 21 and then we are going to take on Misty with our newly evolved Weeping Bell, a Pokemon that James should have used to great effect against Misty but clearly did not. Speaking of which, I don't feel like we ever got to see whether or not James used like a Bellsprout in the anime. I think he just started out with Weeping Bell and then he evolved it into Victory Bell, but we never got to see it in Bell Sprout form, which is unfortunate. I saw, I remembered, like, there's definitely, like, a berry around here that I missed. Oh, look at that. I'm actually kind of happy we didn't encounter this guy over here because th this guy will teleport straight away. And you are left with a whole lot of nothing. Mm, not, a, not a great Pokemon for me to level up against, if I gotta be a thousand percent honest. <sighs> Goodbye, Pidgey. Ooh, this is actually... I was not expecting that the... XP grind would be this slow around here. If he... If that... I mean, here's the thing. 
Th that was split between the two of us, so that would have been 80 experience points. Let's see. I just want to battle a Pokemon that I can take on. Uh, you know what? This is actually not a great grinding spot. I'm actually going to go and run for it. I'm confident that I'll be able to take on Staryu with Bellsprout, no problem. I don't think that I'm going to need to worry about leveling up to Weeping Bell as much as I would love to have it at that level for this boss battle. All right. Oof. <sighs> Hopefully, we won't have to deal with any crits from Yield Misty on this one. Oh, I just realized something. I just remembered something of great importance. If I want to, I can actually teach uh, Bellsprout how to use Bullet Seed, which actually might not actually be that great of an idea because Bullet Seed will at the very least do 20 base damage, at the very most will do 50 base damage. I'm always guaranteed to do slightly more than that. Not up to 50 base damage, but it's actually, yeah, it's not a great prospect. I wish that Vine Whip was a little bit more powerful, but I think I will suffice with it for the time being. All right. I don't have a whole lot of held items that I can use at the moment to make things a little bit easier for me, but I think I will be okay. Here we go. I don't think that Star U has any psychic type moves of note, so I think I'll wing it. Ooh, that did more damage than I was expecting to, actually. There we go. Ooh, resorting to potions already, Misty. That's not good. Now, this still could confuse us, so we gotta be careful. Oh, not this time, though. There we go. Fortunately, Rigatoni's not gonna level up just yet, but the good news is that Blueberry has entered the fray, and oh, Blueberry's not going to be able to level up after this either, probably, but look at that! Only level 21! I thought it might be as high as level 24, but we didn't need to worry quite so much. Let's go ahead and let's bite into this guy. That's actually, I gotta say, of all the coverage moves it can have at its disposal, um, well, the, the star move it just used, which, whose name eludes me, uh, and now it's using Water Pulse. It's probably going for, uh, Confusion. Damn it, Swift! There we go. I'm like, why can I not remember this star move? Oh yeah, you can't remember that star move because it has a name that sounds nothing like what it actually looks like. And there we go. Uh, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually teach uh, good old Water Pulse uh, to Blueberry right here and right now, because we are going to need to make sure that we have all the extra added firepower that we can get going into the next segment of our adventure. Plus, eventually, uh, we will gain access to Surf. And so, <laughs> any Pokemon in my party that currently feels left out uh, over not being taught Water Pulse, won't have to worry about being left out too much longer because eventually they will all just be able to learn Surf and everybody will be perfectly happy with that. Whew. I'm happy that we didn't get an unexpected nasty surprise there like we did with Tate and Lisa. Tate and Lisa, a duo of uh, psychic type trainers that also uh, are known for their tomboyish, overwhelming strength, but thankfully, uh, Misty was not able uh, to seal the deal the way that those two were back during my Emerald Cross Run. So, happy about that. 
Now, I have a lot of love for Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green and the original games that they're based off of, but I gotta say, I don't love the Underground Path. I do love that they added in these little visual indicators to let you know better where you currently are in the path, but yeah, this is clearly like early, you know, Pokemon series. Hey, what if we, you know, inserted an underground tunnel to make it so that you would skip over this one city because we don't want you to go there just yet because it's pretty high level for where you're currently at in your adventure. And I feel like they just could have done something a little bit more interesting. At some point, I will have to pick up the item finder and actually go back there because, as that lady said, there are a lot of items that people drop in the underground tunnel. Ooh, check that out. Rare candy. Ooh, this guy looks like a bug type trainer. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to swap Creamsicle to the front of the party because this guy looks like somebody who's dying to evolve into a Gyarados once we finally give him the proper uh, TLC to do so. I think I could have evolved his Weedle into a Cinnabon ages ago. A Cinnabon, uh, uh, a Beedrill. Whoops. Gotta love String Shot. Goodbye. You know what? Caterpie doesn't uh, have the ability to poison us, so let's see if we can actually just take this guy out with Creamsicle. I think that with just enough tackles, we can pull it off. Ooh, this is going to be close. I mean, I can always heal myself mid-battle if I need to. Unlike this guy, who definitely, most definitely, will not heal his own Caterpie. Uh Ooh, there we go. Finally, things are working out a little bit in my favor. Ah. <laughs> If I get hit again, I will heal myself with a potion just to be certain. Come on. All right, I think I'll be able to take care of this guy without needing to heal. But man, this is a long battle. I might have actually appreciated a, a crit or two there. I will stay in the battle for this guy, but I will immediately swap out. Don't poison. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, Weedle. Uh, I just realized, now that we're here, we actually have the opportunity to catch ourselves a new Pokemon. I'm actually gonna... I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna do that. Well, I guess we have to battle those trainers first. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your boy has a total of three Bell Sprouts on his team now. Definitely not something I was planning on, but lo and behold, we have to respect the rules of a Nuzlocke run. And those rules dictate that, unfortunately, we can only capture the first Pokemon we encounter on any particular route. It's a good thing that in this game, it's actually pretty easy to get uh, repeated Leaf Stones. Well, we got a crit, which means that we got to spin that prize wheel of criticality. Let's spin that wheel. One...
Hot sauce shot. Ooh. We've been streaming for a while now. I didn't think that we were actually going to land on this spot for tonight's stream. I almost am looking forward to this because <laughs> even though I hate it in the moment, this stuff is still pretty fun. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to unscrew this thing and bring in our main camera view. thing about this stuff is that it's uh, a little bit viscous, so you got to really make sure that you properly pound it into your mouth when you're ready to go in case you're ever in the uh, particular situation that uh, I'm in right now where you gotta <laughs> drink hot sauce on stream uh, for your loving, adoring fans. I hope you love and adore me. Ugh. 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 I'm trying to get oh, as much of it out of my uh, the, the little spot on my tongue that it landed on first, but it's like, it's almost like it's burning through it like acid. Ooh, woo, woo, woo. Mm. Not as bad as the first two times, but it's still stick. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> oh man, it's like it's infected my throat. Ugh. Uh, let's get this on with. Like last time, I'm probably going to use uh, sleep powder on this guy so that I can just cinch this capture real quick. I mean, hey, I have no shortage of Pokemon that uh, resist Lieutenant Surge's uh, electric type moves. Uh, if I need that, uh, here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, there we go. All right, we got Rigatoni. We got, uh, Tortellini. What do we want to call this guy? Oh, I know. Real simple after those rather complex pasta names. Penne. There we go. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. I guess I'll, I'll keep Creamsicle to the to the front for this guy. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna talk to this guy first, and then I'm going to uh, swerve around that girl and head into Vermilion. I'm pretty certain that you can. Uh, get your hands on a slowpoke on this route, actually. So I'm actually kind of, kind of disappointed that I didn't get my hands on him because I would have definitely, most definitely, used both slowpoke and slowbro. Those guys, great offensively, great defensively. Don't have great speed, but their move pools are beastly. Oh, eradicate. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I'm gonna swap back into Creamsicle for this one because he will appreciate. The experience points and it's at level 16 I didn't even know I thought he evolved at level 20 <laughs> oh shit that was a critical hit right let's it did not immediately register in my brain so we got to make sure that we take care of that let's just hold on we're gonna check to see does he hit me Nope, he hits himself. All right, prize wheel time. This might be the last time we do it on tonight's stream. I was initially thinking that maybe I'd go up through this route and defeat all the other trainers that were on it, but you know what? Now that we have a full team of Pokemon, I think that we're good for tonight. But before that, let's spin the wheel. One, two, and three. Drop five, okay. That means that once we get out of this battle, we're gonna have to uh, drop five of the items that we currently have in our bag. Certainly not that debilitating now that we have actually quite a few items at our disposal, so that's pretty good. Yay, Creamsicle got to level 16. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to just... 
Uh, arrive at Vermilion City. There we go. Nice to have a nice little spot at the front of the city where we can save our game. Thank you to everybody for tuning in to tonight's stream. Uh, remember, as always, that you can watch these streams live on Twitch every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST. And as VODs on YouTube every Wednesday and Saturday at 3 p.m. EST. And of course, you can also find me on Twitter at Alex Kazina if the tweets and the twats are more your speed. Uh, until next time... I'm Alexander Kazina, a.k.a. Cozy Bear, and I hope that you have a good night. Oh, shit! We need to drop five of our items. Hold on. I wasn't trying to pull a fast one on you guys. I wasn't trying to see if you guys would forget that I had to drop five items per where the uh, prize wheel of criticality landed. Um, let's see here. I can drop an awakening. There we go. One awakening dropped. Uh... I can definitely toss two potions. Uh, let's see here. Mm, and I can definitely toss two Pokeballs. And there we go. We tossed ourselves uh, five items, and I'm going to double save right here and right now to make sure that uh, we don't accidentally save this decision that we just committed to. All right, y'all. Have a good night. Take care. This has been... A whole lot of fun, and by a whole lot of fun, I mean a whole lot of tiring.